Here we go! Welcome to Season 3 of Nintendo Power Zone Unboxing. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed that new intro video. It was brought to you by our brand new co-host, Brendan. Yes, we have new co-hosts on our podcast, and with that comes a whole new rebranding, new logos, new intro videos, the whole spiel. But guys, what we have here on the table is a Pixel Pal, and I know I've done a lot of Pixel Pals here on the channel, and I've ragged on them a lot, but I'm actually pretty excited to talk about this one. What we have here is the Akuma Pixel Pal, number 17. So this is the 17th Pixel Pal that they have released, and it's it's one that I'm fairly excited to do because it's continuing the Street Fighter line. Uh, and this is a way to help celebrate the 30th anniversary of Street Fighter. And as you should know, Street Fighter 2 is one of my favorite fighting games of all time. So let's go ahead and run through the box real quick. Up on the left hand corner of the box, we have the eye light up word bubble. Moving on to the right side of the box, the Street Fighter logo. Written vertically across the box, we have the Pixel Pals logo. Over to the left of that, you see Akuma in the winner display, and then you see his name written right under that. You have the recommended age groups, this is for 14 and up, you have the PDP logo on the bottom left corner of the box, in the center of the box you have the 30th anniversary logo for Street Fighter, and I love this logo, it's very clean, it takes what we saw in the 25th anniversary logo, it just freshens it up a little bit. Alright guys, let's go ahead and turn the box over and take a look at it from the side. Alright, looking at the side of the box, we have the Pixel Pals logo at the top of the box. In the center of the box, you have the Street Fighter logo. Under that, you have the I Light Up Word Bubble. Then you have a picture of the Akuma Pixel Pal turned off and one turned on. What's great about this is that we're seeing uniformity. So if you're a box display person, you're going to have a nice display and the boxes are going to look perfect. Anyway guys, let's go ahead and turn it over take a look at the back. Alright guys, here we are, the back of the box. This is my favorite part of the Pixel Pals boxes because you get the awesome blurbs that detail the characters. So let's go ahead and read Akuma's. After making his debut in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, Akuma has become a recognizable and powerful villain in the Street Fighter franchise. Akuma continues to appear in subsequent titles and has been featured as a hidden boss and secret character. He is often depicted with dark red hair, glowing eyes, and large prayer beads around his neck. So this is an excellent description for Akuma. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a huge, huge Street Fighter 2 fan. And I remember Akuma's debut in Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. It was one of those cool things that you just had to do. You had to play with this character. You had to make sure that you mastered this character. And it's, it's kind of cool because unlike Ken and unlike Ryu, Akuma had his own moveset that was similar to theirs but unique in its own way which just makes him super badass and I just love the fact this character has been able to continue throughout the franchise because there are a lot of Street Fighter characters that have been dropped along the way but Akuma is so iconic to the franchise that he's never getting dropped. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this side of the box. Let's go ahead and turn it over one more time. Alright guys, last side of the box and you have Akuma at the angle. You have the Pixel Pals logo, you have the Capcom logo. That's pretty much it. Time to go ahead and get this thing unboxed. Alright, so we got the Akuma out of the box and let's go ahead and break down this description a little bit because I have some likes and I have some dislikes. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll start with the negatives first. The negative right off the bat is that this is using the Mega Man art style. Yes, I know that this is an official art style that Capcom does indeed endorse, but the way the Pixel Pals use it is one that I do not like. So as far as Capcom endorsing this art style, this is the art style from Street Fighter Cross Mega Man. It was a fan game that they turned into a legit game because Capcom decided to bankroll that uh, fan made game. But the way that the Pixel Pals use it is to save money by making variant figures at a very low cost. They make minor alterations and because of that they get to release multiple figures which would be fine if you don't consider the fact that Street Fighter 2 has such a great art style. It's already done in a pixelated art style. It's 16 bit and by doing the Pixel Pal Street Fighter line in the Mega Man art style, you're completely destroying what is awesome about Street Fighter 2. It's sad, it really is, because I just love that Street Fighter 2 art style, and 
Even though I do love the Mega Man art style, I really just want the Mega Man art style applied to Mega Man. And even within the Mega Man line itself, they've only released variants of Mega Man. They haven't released any of the Robot Masters, and it's just a gross misuse of this art style. Another thing is that there's going to be a Master Chief in this line that's also done in the Mega Man art style. So, you know, PDP isn't really just making classic 8-bit characters out of, you know, newer franchises. They're just rehashing this so that they can extend the line. And there are so many great video game characters that do come in 8 and 16 bits that they are just not willing to touch. How have we gone 17 figures in this line and still not received a Sonic the Hedgehog, or a Toad, or a Princess Peach, or a Bowser, or a Yoshi? There are so many figures they could be doing that they're just not so that they can reuse the Mega Man body style. So, this might be the last Pixel Pal you see me unbox for a long time because I just really can't take the fact that PDP isn't advancing the line in a way that is awesome. This line had a lot of potential and they're just not capitalizing on it in the proper way. Now I'm sure they're going to keep selling it despite me, you know, whether I purchase these or not, they're going to sell these things. So it is what it is. But let's go ahead. Let's talk about some pros. I really like the changes they made to the head sculpt. Despite the fact that they continue to use the Mega Man body, they do always make alterations to the head sculpt. So there's that. Uh, as far as the coloring is concerned, it looks great. Like the red hair on Akuma looks fantastic. And I love the fact that they got the prayer beads on Akuma. Just looks really nice. It is still the Mega Man body, but it still looks nice. Still no micro USB port, still uses AAA batteries, minus one point. Alright guys, it's comparison time, so check out Akuma with the other Street Fighter Pixel Pals. And he looks badass, he just looks girthier, despite the fact that he's not, he physically shares the exact same body style as uh, Ken and Ryu, but he just looks bulkier for some reason, and I just can't quite pinpoint why. His hair is on point, especially in this art style, he just looks sick, just looks very cool. And he, he just stands out among a very weird line of Street Fighter characters. Now, even within the regular Street Fighter art style, Akuma didn't stand out this much in this art style. kind of shines. So, that's another point in its favor. Guys, let's go ahead, let's cut these lights out and turn the Akuma on. Alright guys, so look at how sick this pixel pop actually looks. It looks amazing. This is one of the few pixel pops that doesn't suffer from color washout. Whatever PDP did for this Akuma, they need to continue to do for every other figure in the line. This is a high point in my opinion. It looks great. This is the best functionality on a pixel pal in a long, long time. So, I love it. The reds look on point. The eyes are the only thing that are a little washed out, but they still look fantastic. I love how the prayer beads look. All the browns look fantastic. And I love the fact that because Akuma uses two different shades of brown, one for his skin tone and one for his wrap and sandals, they stand out. They're not blending into one another. PDP, this is how you do this. Alright guys, so here's all the Street Fighter figures all lit up. And they do look really, really nice. I love them. Uh, the Ken and the Ryu with the Chun-Li and Akuma all look fantastic. This is a cool set to display side by side. The only thing that I wish PDP had done for this line is alternate the poses on some of these figures. They're all standing in the same direction. And for a line like Street Fighter, they should be facing each other, so it looks like they're fighting, or about to fight. That's the biggest downside to this in my opinion. But they still all look really, really cool, and it's damn nice to see Ryu, Ken, and Akuma. I love this line, and who could forget the first lady of fighting names, Miss Chum. But guys, it's time for score time, so don't go anywhere. Alright guys, it is score time, my favorite time. Why? Because I get to tell you whether or not something is worth your hard-earned money. 
So this is currently retailing at $14.99 at GameStop, which is pretty standard for the Pixel Pal one. So let's go ahead, let's move into the score itself. I'm going to do three categories this time instead of the normal two, but there's a caveat. We're going to be talking about a third one. So starting with its video game accuracy. This gets a perfect 10. It really does look the way Akuma looks in Street Fighter Cross Mega Man. They did a perfect job of getting that translated very well. That being said, this is not a great art style for Street Fighter characters. Um, specifically a character like Akuma. When we're talking about appearance, this is just Akuma using Mega Man's body style. And there's something a little blasphemous about it. Like the Street Fighter characters have their own amazingly strong design. It kind of feels like going backwards to put them in this art style. And the fact that PvP is using this art style just so that they can roll out figure after figure after figure. Let's run a quick little gamut of how many figures use this particular body style. So you've got the two versions of Mega Man. You've got Ken, Ryu, Akuma, Batman, Joker, like, and, and a Master Chief coming down the road. Too many figures using the same body style so that PvP can, you know, turn a quick dime and do minimal work. Now, I get from a, uh, you know, manufacturing standpoint that this is, this is a quick way for them to turn that book so that they can keep making figures. But this is the 17th figure in the line. That is unacceptable. We should have seen some different characters at this point. We should have seen a Sonic. We should have seen a Yoshi or a ton of other amazing video game characters. Crap. You have Shovel Knight, who is a super popular indie, you know, 8-bit style character. Why is there not a Shovel Knight pixel pal? Where the hell is Sonic? I, I ask again, where the hell is Sonic? So, for its second appearance score, I'm actually going to give it a 6. It's just not what I want from the Pixel Pals line, and this very well may be the last figure that I purchase in this line until we start seeing some more diversity. Okay, so that leads us up to its functionality. I really like the functionality this time around. They did an amazing job of making this work. This is one of the few Pixel Pals that doesn't really suffer from that washout that we see in other figures. And I've complained about it so much at this point that whenever they get it right, it really is a surprise. But these things still take two AAA batteries. And for that, I always have to lower the score by one point. At this point, I would have, I'm, I don't expect them to add the micro USB, but until they do, I'm just gonna keep subtracting that one point. This would have got a nine as far as this functionality was concerned, but they're just not providing me with the options that I want from this line. And it's weird because this is PDP we're talking. They, they make all these amazing video game accessories, accessories that use micro USB ports. So it's just really odd that this is not a line that they want to, you know, go to the extra effort of just putting that plug in the back of the figure. So we gave it a 10 for its video game accuracy. We gave it a six for its appearance and we gave it an eight for its functionality. So its final score is gonna be an eight out of 10. It gets our official Nintendo Power Zone sale quality. That's really good for PDP. They haven't really had an official seal of quality from us in a while uh, but that being said this still isn't really what I want from this line I want them to diversify the line and I want them to make this line awesome because when they started this line it was awesome but I do like the Akuma and I'm glad that you know as far as Street Fighter figures are concerned that I do have a complete set of them so big ups to that anyway guys gotta get out of here but before I do social media links you can hit me up on Twitter at nice1983 you can email me at nice 193 gmail.com Hit me up on Facebook, facebook.com slash Nintendo Power Zone. If you're a fan of Nintendo Power Zone podcast, you can always download new episodes on iTunes, Google Play Music, stream new episodes on Stitcher Radio, or if you want to watch the show live, you can check us right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash user slash the article, T-H-A-A-R-T-I-C-L-E. And guys, as far as the Nintendo Power Zone podcast is concerned, we're starting season three. We are underway with season three. I hope you guys enjoyed meeting the new host to the to the podcast. I'm excited to be working with this bunch, so 
lots of amazing things coming in the future, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and watch out for Amiibo Hunters on the Prop. Deuces.